And a fine morning on our Vintage Survival Series to you all. It's a little foggy, but the sun is up. We have now cleaned up all the trees. Did I miss two trees sitting over there? Or is that just some kind of goofy visual artifact? Because I swear I got them all. But it sure looks like there's still two trees over there. Alright, anyway... Uh potentially losing my mind aside we are going to stick our plow in the ground allow create fields and yes I know I'm destroying some of my crop but the it's all going to be combined together I'm going to plant more canola into this and when I do I am going to be uh You know, just waiting for the stuff that's ahead to Well, I'm just gonna let the stuff that's ahead sit there while I wait for the rest to catch up. That's what I'm trying to say. I am a little on the tired side, uh, when I'm starting this. I will not be finishing this recording tonight because I am tired. I'll explain what I'm going to do with that stuff that's left over here momentarily. As soon as I fix this random bush that I somehow missed. You will also notice we have a lot of money. That's from the trees. We made a lot more money off of that than I expected to. But it is what it is. And the reason why I'm overlapping into crop that's already there is because I don't want to uh, have missed bits. There we go. And it did sound like one of our tractors has arrived at their destination. I have two of them out and about for contracts. You will remember probably from the previous episode that uh, I had a guy out doing a liming contract. Oh, and there's, there was two more in the backlog. He has finished the first one. All right, I'm going to destroy a lot more crop than I really would like to, but I'm going to round off this corner a bit here. I do this halfway neat. Seed's relatively cheap on this series for me, so I'm not really that bothered about it. Alright. So that's that part done. And yeah, those trees were just a goofy visual artifact, it looks like. So we'll start about here. And... Yeah, before I forget, I'll shut that off and cycle through our vehicles. Here we go. So, this is one of our contracts right here. I want to say this is a field that we harvested sugar beet off of one of them, or was next to one of them. Maybe it was that field right there that we harvested and this one was next to it. I don't remember now. It's been a couple weeks. But we have sugar beet needing to go in the ground here. Well, lucky me. I've already got it on sugar beet. Yep. Sweet. So we just need to hit this. Hit this. We're going to do two headlands with sharp corners. And we're going to start work on the center. Sometimes I forget to do that, but let's make it three headlands. There we go. Perfect. Oh. Raise tools late, lower tools early. Horse play.
Huh. I swear there's an op Oh, it's under regular options, isn't it? Is it here? Yeah. I do have that off, so I'm not sure what the running costs was from, but whatever. Alright, so he's all set and going. Keep skipping through. So here we go. We're going to refill on Lime and get this guy going on to his next contract while we go back to plowing. And then we will do our seeding and so on and so forth. One thing I'm going to change when I do my next Vintage Survival series, which will probably stay on 22, I'm going to be honest. It's going to be a while before the Vintage mods come to FS25, I think. Even though we're not that far away from that game. I think this particular series will be staying on FS22. But I could be pleasantly surprised. We'll see. It might just be that I can just toss all these mods into FS25 and they'll work. That kind of almost happened with FS19 mod vehicle mods to FS22. Um, there were tire issues and stuff, but those were all pretty easily fixable once someone figured them out. Alright, where are we going? So we got fields 23 and 56. Do I have a convenient auto drive for either of those? Huh. Both close enough, right? So I guess we'll start on what will be 23, but we're gonna do this first. So 23, look at that right there. And the point is over there, so a little further. I'll go to this one for what is this for? I don't know, let me click on it. Doesn't matter. We'll drop that in there, open the generator. Remember to change this as well. Well, actually on this it doesn't really matter, but I think it looks better doing it the center first. Um, yes. Perfect. That is the field 30 point. Wonderful. Are you really going to go the wrong way? Oh, boy, I hate when Auto Drive does that. I'm just going to go completely the wrong way. Is there uh No, there's a right-hand turn out of here. Unless it's not connected. Sure looks connected to me. Why, thank you, pickup truck. Just ram my equipment, why don't you? Jack hole. All right. <laughs> there, I rammed the next pickup truck. All right. So I'm going to throw you guys on a little bit of a time lapse while I finish plowing the rest of this out. That is going to make this field huge. It is going to be a very slow harvest with our combine, but since we have such a large amount of money, I'm thinking that when I'm done plowing here, we will go combine shopping. All right, talk to you guys when I'm done.
All right, so I just discovered, thankfully, that the previous clip, everything I said, you guys missed it all. Somehow, I had bumped my microphone just enough. It's on my headset. I bumped it just enough that it lifted up two or three millimeters, which disconnects it. It mutes it. Hardware mute. So you guys heard none of what I said. You didn't hear me talking about what combine we were going to buy or anything. You... You'll have seen it now. I'm going to add it to the time lapse of me plowing the field. But um, you didn't hear anything of what I'm planning on doing. So basically we've upgraded to this gleaner. It's still an Alice Chalmers. That's what a gleaner is. It's an Alice Chalmers. Uh, there we go. See it right there on the bottom of the cab. Alice Chalmers. So we've kind of become, on accident, a bit of an Alice Chalmers farm. Alice and John Deere. Um, with a little bit of Ford thrown in, I guess, and one case planter. So, yeah, um, we're going to get rid of the old combine when we have a moment, but for now, it can just sit there. We'll turn this guy off. No point in wasting fuel. Alrighty. Um, so I am going to put you guys aside for a moment. I'm going to plow out this little field extension over here, and we're going to get busy with everything that comes next. So I'll see you guys after. All right, I reset these to the shop rather than driving them down. It was just easier that way. So there's those gone. Boy, we didn't get much back for those, did we? Okay. Um, wow, this guy made it all the way through. That's great. So we know that we can... We know that we can go and collect on a contract there. Oh, that guy got almost done. Unfortunately, he ran out. So we are going to send this guy back to the farm. So we're going to head straight back to the shop with him. Wonderful. That'll get taken care of there. And we, what do we need to be doing? We need to be planting is what we need to be doing. So we need to, I'm sorry, sowing. <laughs> so we need to grab this here. I just remembered something. I think I lost a partial pallet of seed down there that I was trying to transport back on the uh, <laughs> on the top of the uh, planter that's on its way back on, from the AI worker. So <laughs> that might be just laying in the road somewhere. But we do have this guy. Nope. No, I, that's a decoration pellet, and the one that had been sitting on top of there is gone. That's right. My bad. That's fine, though. We can, um... <laughs> we can run over here and see if I really did leave one laying in the road. Although the traffic seems to be getting through just fine. And I'm not seeing it in the road, so where the heck did it go? Oh, I do see it on the mini-map, though. It's over here somewhere. Here comes our planter. It's right here on the corner. Did it fall in the bushes? I think it fell in the bushes. I really do think it's in the bushes. That's where it appears to be on the mini-map, anyway.
kinda. Oh, nope, I see it. It's on the other side of the road. There's only like one or two bags left on it. Two bags, it looks like. And it was blending right into the grass. Wonderful. And there it goes. Alrighty. Well, I'm gonna get on to this. Actually, I'm going to make sure that I take care of the other tractor first. And this time, I want to try this point, because uh, was it that point? No, it wasn't. It was uh, the 24, 25, 26 point. Because I didn't like what Field 30 point did. kind of went all over the place. It is looking like we will probably have to purchase more lime for this guy, but maybe only a bag or two. Well, we do have a bag still back at the farm. Yep. Set that to the last waypoint. Turn that on and have him go. I'm nervous about where he's going. What the heck are you doing, guy? That's a dead end. It's a dead end. As much as I love course playing auto drive, sometimes you really do just gotta wonder, don't you? All right, let's try this again. Now I'm off to do my uh, seating. I'll talk to you guys afterwards. Uh, in the meantime, here's another time lapse for you. Okay, I thought I'd bring you guys back real quick for a full disclosure moment. So I had spoken previously about the issue with the rear three-point top link arm floating way up in the sky on the 5020, and we were kind of just ignoring it and using it. Well, since we have the funds, I decided it was time to trade that in. So I've sold that now, and this is what I've set up for myself to purchase. It is a... 
uh, John Deere 40 series. Specifically, we've gone with the 4440, which I came very close to buying one of these in real life, but it was kind of out of my price range at the time uh, by like five grand. <laughs> um, so we've gone with the US-1 style, which is whether or not it has fenders, which I want no for front fenders, and what kind of stack and whatnot it has. So pick that out. I've done beacons four which is these beacons plus these little flashers on the cab that's great um front loader we want a john deere front loader for this and we're only going to get the arm for now or should we actually get the front loader i know it doesn't make a lot of sense to get the front loader when we also have the forklift but on the front loader i can put a bucket on the forklift i can't so yeah i'm i'm happy with that we've gone with wide tires with wheel weights got front and rear three points yeah so we're gonna buy it and then we will whoops we will hit combinations none really um fine i'll do it the hard way um front loaders that's not the right one that's probably the right one or is it 643 no it's this guy yeah it's got to be this guy perfect so we're gonna jump into that oh that sounds amazing Beautiful. It's the wrong one. <laughs> we do need the next size up. Darn it. This one's just too small, too short. Dad gummit. just accept the loss there because I knew I was wrong. No, no, nope, nope. Yeah, I knew that was the wrong choice, but I ignored my instincts and my own doubts and went by the horsepower rating only. much better. Okay, this is all set up for contract number three. Which is on field 56? Yes, 56. So we're going to send this guy off to, well, we better look on here. What's the closest to 56? Fifty two, fifty six. Uh, so we got that point right there. Perfect. All right. So we want to do our options here, which means turn that off, swap these. Those are wrong. They should be the other way around. <laughs> We're going to actually save the game because I don't want to forget. Plunk that there. Number of headlands, two. Start work on the center. Sharp corners. Beautiful. Maybe better do three headlands. We're gonna 
fire him off. Wonderful. So he's headed that way. And we are just back here on the farm to close out the episode by talking about what are we doing with... Oh. Okay, well, while we're talking, I can plant this side that I completely forgot about. I really am tired. I did not plan on recording this whole episode tonight. And yet, I did. Like an idiot. So, this space to our left, where the equipment's currently just sitting in the grass, that's what it's going to stay down, stay as, basically, is a, uh, call it what you want, a laydown yard, a, just a yard, you know, whatever term you want to use for it. We will probably get some kind of shelter at some point for the vehicles, um, or, you know, just to keep things out of the weather. That's what that will remain. The other side... That far side piece by whatever that production is over there that I also left unplowed is for a similar reason. Um, over there, we will be placing whatever we have for animals. That way, you know, we don't have to uh, smell their manure. <laughs> <clears throat> so, yeah, we're going to get animals of some description and they're going to go over there. We will probably also put in a silo of some sort over there to uh, store crops in. We might even do that right at the very beginning of the next episode. Traffic. Whoops, I'd already put it back and forward. Crazy traffic, not yielding for the massive tractor in the road. <laughs> crazy jerk tractor driver being in the road. Um, yeah, so we have some cheap vintage silo options, including root crop sellers and whatnot that I would like to put in. Um, those will likely go over there if there is room. But if not, they will probably go between our track and the road. Um, our farm track in the road. We currently have some stuff parked there, obviously, but uh, that can move easily enough. You know what? We're kicking so much butt here and moving so fast with this. I did plant these trees by plant, I mean, plunk down from the buy the whole tree menu. Uh, I got rid of all of the pines and then put in some deciduous trees in their place. Uh, just because I like them better. So let's have a look at what we are thinking of here. I'll catch you over there. Alrighty, so it does look like if I get what I kind of intended to get, which we obviously don't have the money for, it will fill this entire space pretty much. There will be a little bit behind it there. But it is a cow barn that holds 20 cows. It is out of the old buildings pack. Um, and, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. We have milk and animal points on the front and in the back corner there is well it's a load point oh that's going to be slurry I assume the uh, feed point must be inside somehow I have not looked at this yet but there is a barn door there there's a couple on this side so I am guessing that the feed and bedding points would be if it even has a bedding point would be on the uh, inside. And that space that's left we could use for a manure heap. I don't have any ones that I would consider vintage installed, but that's easy enough to remedy. So yeah, this is probably what we'll go with. We need 30 grand to do that. So quick show you. 
silos. I mean, we got lots of nice old sheds out of that same old shed pack and some other stuff. Uh, you know, lots of options to choose from on that. But silos. I'm kind of considering the medieval granary ones by Omatana, which I guess we could squeeze in there in the corner if we absolutely had to. Um, or right here, directly opposite the cattle. Uh, but, you know, that's just a thought. They're, they're cheap. They have a massive capacity. And, uh, yeah, whoops. <laughs> then these are the other ones. The cellar, which is for all your root crops. And I do mean all premium expansion everything. There's a hayloft here that's kind of on the big side. There is this silo as well. But I kind of like the medieval style ones better. They're also cheaper. There's also this awesome thing, which I wish it wasn't so expensive. Um, but yeah, that's what we're looking at. So some cows and uh, some stuff to go with them. And look at that. We have a uh, phantom tree. Now it's gone. And now it's back. Lots of phantom trees. That should clear up when we save and load back in. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for today, everybody. I'd like to thank you all for watching. As always, I will see you on the next one.